The Story of the Jews with Simon Shama is made possible by lead funding from the Paul and Irma Milstein family. Major funding is generously provided by the Polanski Foundation. Additional major support is provided by the Pershing Square Foundation, the Joseph S. and Diane H. Steinberg Charitable Trust, James and Merrill Tisch, Mortimer B. Zuckerman, the David Berg Foundation, Daniel and Joanna S. Rose, and the Lemberg Foundation. Support is also provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and PBS. The Soviet Jews were lost, were lost to the Jewish people after 70 years of communism, you know, lost. But in 1965, Elie Wiesel, who is a Holocaust survivor and a very well-known author, he went to the Soviet Union and what he found there were Jews who wanted to be Jewish and who told him, don't forget us and help us leave this place because we can't be Jews here. So he wrote a book called The Jews of Silence, which really put the whole issue of Soviet Jewry on the agenda of the organized Jewish community around the world. And it became very clear very early on that the focus of our campaign would be on the U.S. administrations. And we would say to the U.S. governments, successive governments, press the Soviets to allow freedom, to allow emigration of Soviet Jews. Soviet Jews were often denied the right to leave their country. When applying to do so, they were fired from their jobs, labeled as enemies of the state, and sometimes even put in jail. In the 1970s and 80s, communities around the United States, including Indianapolis, brought the issue to Washington. They asked their representatives to raise the names of oppressed Jews with Soviet officials. Senator Richard Lugar was instrumental to the movement. As a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I had opportunities to work with the State Department and, and with others uh, to see really what the channels might be. It was very satisfying when Jews were able to come out of the former Soviet Union. It meant a, a great deal in, in terms of the freedom of religion for these folks. If anybody would ever tell that I made, I put my foot in, in the synagogue, I would lose my job. So I, I live two blocks from synagogue and I was avoiding it. Tamila Nelson was born and raised in Ukraine. She met her husband, Alex, after they were both denied admission to a medical school for being Jewish. They had a son, and by 1979, the Nelsons decided the time was right to emigrate and make a better life for their family. After we applied, we could not go anywhere. He also had to leave his job. I had to leave my job because I worked in school, in music school, and they consider you enemy of country. You cannot, you can influence children, which is not a good idea. So we decided before apply, we decided to just quit work. But the trick was that if you quit working, you cannot apply. To remain employed, Tamila's husband, formerly an engineer, worked an inconspicuous night job loading bread into trucks for transport. After a year of waiting, they were allowed to go. We were lucky, we got permission. It was my mother, our son, and two of us. So four people left. April of seven, we just crossed the border of Ukraine. And it's something you don't forget, you know, this is like implanted in your brain. <laughs> this is me, believe it or not. And there are two ladies, uh, Betty Pollard and Vicky Rothschild, mm -hmm. one, two ladies from the two sponsored families. They met us, they organized our apartments, they put food in, they tried to call us, but I would not pick up the phone because I could not speak English. It was so much easier you now when you could use your gestures. <laughs> Upon arriving in Indianapolis, the Nelsons were met by several Jewish families who helped them learn the American way of life. Led by Karen Goldstein and the Council of Jewish Women, over 300 Soviet families were matched with volunteers of the Family Circles program in Indianapolis alone. The concept was so effective, it was used in communities across the country to help thousands of Soviet Jewish immigrants adjust to their new lives. We needed apartments for these families. 
We needed furnishings for the apartments. We needed to help people once they got here to get them transportation, medical help, uh, and acculturation, which meant learning to navigate um, the banking system, the grocery stores, everyday life. Honestly, I was scared when I left. I didn't know what to expect and, you know, missing family. And I was um, really surprised by this welcome, warm family embrace that we experienced from lots of families, from a lot of uh, neighbors. This was a huge upheaval in their lives. Uh, coming to the United States from the Soviet Union, you couldn't come from societies more di diverse and different. And um, it made a real impression on me that it was an important thing to help. Judaism isn't just a religion, it's a peoplehood. So when a Jew in Moscow cries, a Jew in Indianapolis hears him and wants to do something about it. It is a, an actually a modern his, miracle of historic proportions, over a million Soviet Jews out of the Soviet Union, and they've changed the face of Israel. They have changed the face of Israel.